greetings of the day to all of you <clears throat> uh, in today's lecture first of all i will try to make a comparison between fax technology and hvdc technology i will write here fax versus hvdc actually fax and hvdc technologies are complementary technologies they are complementary technologies they exist both of these technologies exist uh, in this era and uh, as an engineer as an as a power engineer we have to uh, you know uh, make a proper choice between the two technologies so therefore we must have a very good understanding of both the technologies as far as hvdc technology is concerned hvdc systems uh, they are not uh, grid connected systems i mean uh, they are not interconnected with ac grids or I, I would like to say hvdc system is not grid connected and where interconnection between two ac systems becomes costly hvdc provides a solution okay uh, there are about more than 50 hvdc projects all over the world and many uh, you know uh, these uh, back to back hvdc transmission systems are existing in india also apart from main hvdc projects in order to make a comparison between the two technologies let's take a few points first of all we will take uh, their comparison uh, as far as submarine cables are concerned we may have to uh, transfer power through submarine cables in this case i would like to say that ac cables have long capacitance and they require large charging currents i have already discussed with uh, you in uh, while discussing hvdc systems in uh, last semester uh, as far as ac cables are concerned the capacitance uh, between the cores or between the conductors is very high and these ac cables require large charging currents for distances above 30 kilometers the charging current or reactive power is so large that it leaves no room for transfer of active power over the cable so if the distances are greater than 30 kilometers and we are trying to transmit ac power through cables say submarine cables then charging currents are so high that only reactive power is flowing over the cables because charging current uh, basically represents reactive power of course capacitive reactive power and this reactive power is so large charging currents are so large that it leaves no room for transfer of power over the cable what is the solution to this problem if you still want to transmit power over submarine cables the solution is that you install shunt reactors shunt reactors along the route of the cable uh, after every 15 to 20 kilometers after every 15 to 20 kilometers so what we do we uh, lay shunt reactors or inductors after every 15 to 20 kilometers and uh, connect them shunt reactors across the cables so that they absorb the reactive power okay but it requires allocation of land and it's, it's a very uh, you know costly affair and uh, it's not uh, practically feasible on the other hand if you go for hvdc system you can have submarine cables and you can transmit power through hvdc cables because there is no problem of this reactive power because hvdc cables do not have any uh, charging current and hence no reactive power is there so you can transmit bulk amount of uh, active power through submarine cables if instead of going for ac transmission you go for hvdc transmission However, let me tell me. However, let me tell you. Uh, tell you that uh, there is a fax controller, which is called UPFC. I already introduced that in previous lecture. Unified power flow controller, which is a combination of shunt fax controller and series fax controller. This UPFC, that is unified power flow controller, helps maintaining the receiving end voltage of a cable constant and equal to that at the other end. Okay. So if this is one end of the, of the cable, this is the other end of the cable, it makes the two voltages at the two ends same. And hence it is feasible for long distances up to 100 kilometers. 
up to 100 kilometers. So therefore, if you want to transmit AC power through submarine cables, you can use a fax controller UPFC with the help of which you can transmit AC power through submarine cables over up to 100 kilometers. But beyond 100 kilometers, uh, HVDC is unchallenged because beyond 100 kilometers, this te technique becomes costly and then HVDC technique takes over. So in nutshell, I would like to say that for uh, transmit of, transmission of power over cables, uh, AC transmission of power, we can use UPFC and it will be feasible up to 100 kilometers. But beyond 100 kilometers, HVDC technique is used. That technology is unchallenged. So that is the first point of comparison. Second is underground transmission, underground power transmission. I already told you that uh, if you go for underground power transmission, again, it's not possible uh, to have AC underground power transmission, again, because of large charge, charging currents, large reactive power. However, we can go for HVDC power transmission through underground cables. But the problem is that uh, these uh, underground cables are um, underground power transmission is very, very costly. Okay. Um, Overhead transmission costs just 25% of underground long distance transmission. Let me write here, overhead power transmission costs just 25% of that of underground long distance transmission. So if you have uh, underground transmission, say through HVDC, it will cost much higher, uh, much larger. On the other hand, if you go for overhead power transmission, then um, the cost will be just 25% of that of underground power transmission. So that's the that's one of the reasons that we do not go for underground power transmission, even with HVDC technology, uh, where there is no problem of charging currents. Okay. So therefore, for long distance underground transmission is ruled out, whether it is AC power transmission with facts or uh, DC power transmission through underground uh, cables. Third is long distance overhead transmission. Now I have already told you that long distance overhead transmission is uh, much cheaper than uh, long distance underground power transmission okay so for long distance overhead transmission that is long distance means 1000 kilometer uh, this power transmission or more than 1000 kilometer long transmission line HVDC is cheaper HVDC system of transmission is cheaper because I have already told you in last uh, semester while studying HVDC systems that for uh, distances greater than break break even distance so distances greater than break even distance which is around 500 to 600 kilometers HVDC power transmission is uh, you know um, uh, it's cheaper than AC power transmission okay uh, now the question is, uh, fax technology can improve utilization of transmission lines and in transmission markets, we, we, I would like to say that fax technology is used where cost of HVDC transmission is higher. If you use fax technology, the existing power transmission network can be uh, utilized in a better way. You know, the power transfer capability of existing power transmission network can be improved. And where HVDC te uh, technology is costlier, we immediately go for uh, AC power transmission using fax devices. So therefore, for certain distances, fax technology is uh, cheaper and for uh, very long distances, HVDC technology is cheaper. Okay. The next is interconnecting systems of different frequencies. Interconnecting systems of different frequencies different frequencies in this context i will uh, i would like to uh, mention uh, that oceans have divided the globe into 50 hertz and 60 hertz electrical systems 
all countries of America except Argentina and Uruguay they use 60 hertz system um, and um, Japan partly use 50, 50 hertz and partly 60 hertz Asia and Europe we use uh, 50 hertz systems there are many many HVDC projects uh, running in different countries with the help of which you can connect a 50 hertz system with a 60 hertz system for example in Japan part of the Japan has 50 hertz grids and uh, rest of the Japan has 60 hertz grids so you cannot interconnect a 50 hertz grid with a 60 hertz grid through AC tie lines so you have to go for HVDC links so with the help of HVDC links you can interconnect 50 hertz grid with 60 hertz grid that's uh, that's how what it is done in Japan but with the passage of time you know uh, if a particular country has only one frequency say 50 hertz or 60 hertz that there is no question of interconnecting the grids of different frequencies so in that case uh, facts technology will play an important role because you don't have to interconnect the systems of different frequencies and in that case using facts technology you know you can achieve many objects like you can make the system more secure more stable its transient stability can be improved power oscillations or electromechanical oscillations can be very effectively damped uh, magnitude of short circuit currents in the event of faults can be reduced with the help of fax devices and then power transfer capability of existing power transmission systems can be increased and, and so on so therefore where uh, this interconnection of different frequency grids is not required fax technology plays a pivotal role we can use fax technology there so this is a brief comparison between fax technology and HVDC technology let me tell you at present there is a very tough competition between the two technologies however from the point of view of long distance transmission it is the HVDC technology which wins over uh, fax technology because it is cheaper than you know AC transmission networks using fax technology but let me tell you that uh, with the uh, uh, in future say 10 or 15 years down the line uh, when fax technology will become very very common the cost of power semiconducting devices the imp uh, there will be improvement in the power semiconducting devices the cost of uh, fax devices will uh, reduce and uh, fax technology will become very very common then fax technology may take over HVDC technology so that is the comparison between the two that is about the comparison between the two technologies so that's all about various, uh, you know, uh, the detailed introduction of fact technology. We have, <coughs> I have uh, def in the very first lecture, I have defined flexible AC transmission system facts. I have given you the background of facts technology, what facts technology is, the, uh, how it helps in large interconnected power systems, uh, what are the problems with interconnected power systems and how those problems are solved with, with the help of facts technologies. With the help of fax technology we have discussed it in quite details in last two to three lectures and then um, i have also uh, discussed with you uh, main classification of fax controllers like series controllers shunt controllers combined series series controllers combined series shunt controllers then other fax controllers like thyristor control phase shifting transformer thyristor control voltage regulator and so on <clears throat> I also discussed with you the control attributes of various fax uh, devices or fax controllers and benefits from fax technology and in the end we made a we tried to made, make a comparison between fax technology and HVDC technology. Now let us <coughs> try to study uh, a power transmission network AC power transmission network and develop certain uh, mathematical models of these uh, systems long high voltage AC transmission systems try to understand the active power flow the reactive power flow over these transmission systems then uncompensated system problems with an uncompensated transmission system why, why what is the need for compensation what type of compensations are there and you know slowly and gradually we will start building the concepts about the series fax controllers or series compensators, shunt fax controllers or shunt fax, shunt compensators and all that. Okay, so to begin with, 
I will discuss with you uh, power on a long distributed parameter transmission line. Distributed parameter transmission line. We have a long power transmission line, distributed parameter power transmission line. The two machine model is given like this. This is the sending end generator or sending end. This is the receiving end, for example, receiving end. And you know, power flowing over the line is P. There's two machine model of uh, power transmission network. Okay, now a power transmission line has four parameters first is resistance second is conductance third is inductance and fourth is capacitance so therefore when you mathematically want to model a power transmission line a long distributed parameter transmission line we have to include resistance now resistance is because of the resistivity of the conductor then you have to also model conductance conductance is because of the currents flowing um, or leakage currents in the string in, uh, string of string insulators and also because of corona inductance is because of magnetic field around a conductor which develops uh, self inductance of the conductor and capacitance is because of electric field between the conductors when when you take a power transmission line and the conductors uh, which are at very high voltage there is an electric field between the conductors of transmission line and that gives rise to capacitance. So therefore four fundamental parameters of a long distributed parameter transmission line are resistance, conductance, in inductance and capacitance. That's R, G, L and C. Generally what happens this, uh, this uh, resistance and conductance are neglected while we model a power transmission line. Inductance and capacitance are taken care of and the model of power transmission line with distributed parameters is like this We have series inductance shunt capacitance like this then again inductance capacitance and so on Large number of inductances series inductances and shunt capacitances like this This may be the sending end or one end of the transmission line sending end voltage is Vs at an angle of zero degree and here this is the other end of the transmission line you can call it receiving end which is at an where voltage is Vr it's at an angle of minus delta okay the sending end current is Is the receiving end current is Ir the inductance is Lc Lc and so on so this is the uh, model of a long distributed parameter transmission line we have modeled it through inductances and capacitances. Fine. <clears throat> now, the impedance of transmission line, if impedance of transmission line is given by this equation, Z0 equal to under root of L by C. If this is the uh, impedance of the transmission line, this impedance is called surge impedance. You must have studied in your BTEC power systems course that this impedance is called surge impedance or characteristic impedance. It's called surge impedance or characteristic impedance. And if power is power transmitted over the line is given by this equation P naught equal to voltage V naught square by Z naught. So if the line carries this much of power, V0 square by Z0, right? Z0 is under root of L by C, it's surge impedance or characteristic impedance. This loading of the transmission line is called surge impedance loading. It's called surge impedance loading. SIL, SIL, right? So therefore, if you see the variation of transmission line voltage with distance as a function of surge impedance loading this is voltage versus distance of transmission line the graphs will be something like this 
this is sending end voltage i will write here se voltage se voltage means sending end voltage and this is the receiving end voltage re means receiving end voltage and power carried by line if it is equal to surge impedance loading if p is equal to p not if p is equal to p not then in that case power factor is unity and in that case the receiving end voltage is exactly equal to sending end voltage there is no rise or drop in the voltage just something like this now on the other hand if p is less than p not if the loading of the transmission line is less than its surge impedance loading then it will the voltage with with distance will vary like this in that case reactive power absorbed by the transmission line is less than reactive power generated in the system see some reactive power will be generated and some reactive power will be absorbed in that case reactive power absorbed will be less than reactive power generated so there will be excess reactive power over the line and because of excess reactive power over the line capacitive reactive power the voltage of the line will increase so voltage will increase as you can see with distance voltage increases so this is for p less than surge impedance loading p not and if on the other hand if loading or power carried by transmission line is greater than its surge impedance loading then in that case reactive power absorbed will be greater than reactive power generated whatever is the reactive power generated by a compensator if you at all have a compensator the reactive power absorbed by the system will be more than reactive power generated and in that case the voltage will decrease so characteristic will be like this so this is for p greater than p not so if loading of the transmission line power carried by transmission line is equal to p not which is surge impedance loading the power factor is unity and there is no drop in the voltage this is the ideal situation and we would like our transmission network to behave like this although it will not be exactly like this but we can make it uh, follow this pattern if p is less than p not then voltage will increase with along with the distance with distance if p is greater than p not voltage will decrease okay so this is for p equal to p not this for p less than p not this for p greater than p not now we can here see that maximum activity is take place in the middle of the transmission line max by maximum activity i would like to say that maximum voltage dip for p greater than p not occurs here which is the middle of the transmission line and similarly for p less than p not maximum voltage rise is in the middle of the transmission line so therefore maximum activities which means either maximum voltage drop or maximum voltage rise that occurs in the middle of the transmission line and that is one of the reasons that shunt compensators like statcom or svc they are connected in the middle of the transmission line whenever you connect a shunt compensator like statcom or svc generally these compensators are connected in the middle of the transmission line because maximum drop or maximum rise or maximum activities they occur in the middle of the transmission line fine <clears throat> let's move ahead with our discussions <clears throat> i would like to derive a mathematical expression for power active power and reactive power flowing over an uncompensated transmission line let me take two machine model of a power transmission network i will write here two machine model and this two machine model will look like this we have a sending end voltage vs the reactance of transmission line is jx we divide it into two equal halves jx by 2 on this side and jx by 2 so jx by 2 plus jx by 2 is jx which is the total reactance of the transmission line the receiving end voltage is vr the voltage in the middle of the transmission line let us assume the voltage at the middle of the transmission line is vm and the current flowing through the line is i right so uh, as far as this current is concerned this current will you will see that it will be in phase with the voltage in the middle of the transmission line anyway let us try to draw the phase diagram of this two machine model of transmission system we have sending end voltage 
this is sending end voltage Vs and we have a receiving end voltage Vr. The two voltages have, uh, you know, they are at an angle of delta. The angle between the two voltages is delta. And this delta is called power angle. It's either called, called power angle or transmission angle. It's also called transmission angle. And it is this delta which determines the amount of active power carried by transmission line or active power transferred over the transmission line. Now, if you want to find Vm voltage in the middle of the transmission line, you can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in this half of the circuit. This Vm will be Vs minus this drop. And what is this drop? This is Jix by 2. So it will be something like this. I mean, if this is your Vm, if this is Vm, it will be, it will be, th th this drop will be Jix by 2. And this Vm is Vs minus Jix by 2. Similarly, if you want to find Vm on this side, it will be Vr minus Jix by 2. So this drop is also same Jix by 2 and Vm is Vr minus Jix by 2. Now the phase angle between Vm middle voltage and sending end voltage is delta by 2. Similarly, the angle between Vm and Vr receiving end voltage, it is delta by 2. Okay. And I have already told you that as far as current carried by transmission line is concerned, I, it is in phase with the voltage in the middle of the transmission line. So, therefore, power flowing over the transmission line, active power, that is equal to Vm into I. So, therefore, if I have a, an expression for Vm, that is voltage in the middle of the line, and if I have a, a mathematical expression for current flowing through uh, through the transmission line i can substitute in this equation and i can uh, you know uh, get the mathematical expression for power okay now as far as uh, vm is concerned now you can see from this diagram that voltage in the middle of the line is sending and voltage plus receiving and voltage by 2 it is vs plus vr by 2 okay i hope that's clear to you so now let us call this equation as equation 2. What is Vs sending and voltage? Let us assume that sending and voltage is same as receiving and voltage and let us say it is equal to V. Let Vs be, be equal to Vr be equal to V. Let the two voltages be same. That is Vs is equal to V, Vr is also equal to V. Now what is this sending and voltage? This sending and voltage is V e raised power J delta by 2 from this equation. So this is V e raised power J delta by 2. Okay because the phase angle between Vs and Vm is delta by 2. So that is equal to V. What is E raised power? What is this operator E raised power, e raised power J delta by 2? It is cos delta by 2 plus J sin delta by 2. Right? So therefore Vs is equal to V cos delta by 2 plus J V sin delta by 2. Let us name this equation as equation 3. Similarly, we can find Vr. What will be Vr equal to? Similarly, if I write Vr, Vr will be equal to V at an V e raised power minus J delta by 2. That is equal to V into cos delta by 2 <coughs> minus J sin delta by 2. So therefore, Vr will be equal to V cos delta by 2 minus j v sin delta by 2 that's equation 4 so therefore substituting equations 3 and 4 into equation 2 we have now expression for vs as given in equation 3 we have expression for vr as given in equation 4 substituting equations 3 and 4 into equation 2 we'll get the mathematical expression for vm okay so let me write here substituting substituting equations 3 and 4 in equation 2 we get what do we get we get vm is equal to vs plus vr by 2 what is vs just few moments back we have written that is v cos delta by 2 plus j v sine delta by 2 plus vr vr is given here by equation 4 that's here plus v cos delta by 2 minus j v sine delta by 2 and then this whole divided by 2 okay <clears throat> so 
Now this is V cos delta by 2 plus V cos delta by 2 that is Vm equal to V cos delta by 2 plus V cos delta by 2 is 2V cos delta by 2 Jv sin delta by 2 minus Jv sin delta by 2 that makes 0 they cancel divided by 2 whole divided by 2. So therefore Vm is equal to <coughs> 2 and 2 goes so it is V cos delta by 2. Let us call this equation as equation 5. Now uh, I have already told you that power uh, transferred is equal to Vm into i that was our equation 1. So we have got I have got the expression for Vm. Now I want expression for current flowing over the transmission line. So what is this current? If you see from this circuit this voltage minus this voltage divided by whole reactance that is the current. Simple you apply um, uh, this Kirchhoff's voltage law here or you apply Ohm's law. Ohm's law says uh, current is voltage by uh, impedance. So voltage, net voltage in the circuit is Vs minus Vr. So it is Vs minus Vr divided by whole impedance. What is the total impedance? Jx by 2 plus Jx by 2. That is Jx. Okay. So I is equal to Vs from equation 3 is v cos delta by 2 plus j v sin delta by 2 minus v r v r is v cos delta by 2 minus into minus is plus j v sin delta by 2 whole divided by j x now v cos delta by 2 and minus v cos delta by 2 they cancel out so i will be equal to 2 um, it will be j and j goes so it will be 2 v sine delta by 2 by x okay so that will be equal to 2 v by x sine delta by 2 that is equation 6 so therefore i have got the mathematical expression for current i from equation 6 and from equation 5 i have got the mathematical expression for vm which is like this so substitute equations 5 and 6 into equation 1 that is substitute the value of Vm and value of I from equations 5 and 6 into equation 1 we will get so therefore from equation 1 I will write from equation 1 P is equal to Vm into I that is equal to what is Vm <coughs> Vm is V cos delta by 2 from equation 5 that is V cos delta by 2 into I. What is I? I from equation 6 is 2V by X sin delta by 2. Right? So let me rub this. So power transmitted or transferred over the line is V into V is V square. So it is 2V square by X sin delta by 2 cos delta by 2. <coughs> Okay, so okay, so this becomes equal to B square by X sine delta. Okay, so it is basically sine, uh, it is uh, what is two sine delta by 2 cos delta by 2 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta so that is 2 sin delta uh, that is sin uh, 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta that is sin into 2 into theta theta is delta by 2 delta and uh, 2 and 2 goes that is equal to sin delta that is what I, I am writing here so I can rearrange it I mean I can write this equal to v square by x into 2 sin delta by 2 cos delta by 2 and 2 sin delta by 2 cos delta by 2 is sin 2 delta by 2 sin 2 into delta by 2 2 and 2 goes that is equal to sin delta and that is this so therefore power transmitted or power transferred over this long transmission line is given by this equation this is a very important equation i am sure you already have a knowledge about this equation this power equation you might you might have uh, got from your uh, you know while studying 
transmission lines in your power systems course at undergraduate level. So P is equal to V square by X sine delta. This is the active power flowing over the transmission line. In addition to active power, there may be reactive power also over the transmission line because of the reactive loads and reactive components in the system. What is reactive power? Reactive power is given by V I sine delta by 2. Okay. It's not cos delta by 2, it is sine delta by 2. So Q is equal to V into I. Just few moments back we had got the expression for I. I is 2V by X sine delta by 2 and multiplied by sine delta by 2. I have substituted the value of I here. That's all. So Q is equal to 2V into V is 2V square by X sine delta by 2 into sine delta by 2 is sine square delta by 2. Fine. This is a very important equation for Q. So therefore Q is 2V square by X sine, del sine square delta by 2 or we can also write Q equal to V square by X 2 sine square delta by 2 is equal to 1 minus cos delta. Okay. So therefore you can either uh, represent Q by this equation 2V square by X sine square delta by 2 or in terms of cosine v square by x times 1 minus cos delta. Let us try to plot these equations. So I have active power transferred over the transmission line given by v square by x sine delta and I have reactive power flowing over the line given by v square by x into 1 minus cos delta. So I can show you the power angle characteristics, the very famous power angle characteristics, which I am sure you must have drawn in your undergraduate power systems course. This is P of the Q, active power and reactive power versus transmission angle or versus power angle, delta. Okay. Now you can see when delta is zero, sine zero is zero. So we can start from here, P is zero. For delta, for delta equal to 90 degrees, sine delta is equal to sine 90 degrees that is equal to 1 so therefore steady state limit of steady state limit it's called steady state limit is equal to v square by x because sine delta is sine 1 sine delta is 1 so this is called steady state so for delta equal to 90 degrees we have something like this this is delta equal to 90 degrees for delta equal to 90 degrees, maximum active power flows over the line and that is given by V square by X. And for delta equal to, as delta increases beyond 90 degrees, P decreases. And for delta equal to 180 degrees, sine 180 degrees is 0 and 0. For delta equal to 0, it is 0. For delta equal to 180 degrees, it is 0. And then as delta increases from 0 to 90 degrees, P increases from 9 to 180 degrees, it decreases. At delta equal to 90 degrees, the maximum power, active power, which is transferred, which flows over the line is V square by X, which is called steady state uh, limit of the line. So this graph represents active power flow over the line, that is v, P equal to V square by X sine delta. What about reactive power? Reactive power is given by this equation. For uh, delta equal to 0 degree, cos 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so we will start with 0. Then as delta increases, this also increases at delta equal to 90 degrees, cos 90 degrees is 0. So Q is equal to V square by X. So same. It's same as this. And then at delta equal to 180 degrees, uh, cos 180 degrees is minus 1. Minus 1, minus 2 to minus is plus. So it is 2 V square by X. For delta equal to 180 degrees, Q is equal to V square by X into 1 minus cos 180 degrees. That is 1, 1 plus 1. That is equal to 2 V square by X. And if this is V square by X, this will be your 2 V square by X somewhere here. This may be 2 V square by X. So this is reactive power. Flow over the line. That is V square by X into 1 minus cos delta given by this equation. Q equal to V square by X into 1 minus cos delta. So therefore, these two graphs show variation of active power and variation of reactive power flow over the transmission line as a function of delta, as a function of power angle or as a function of uh, 
uh, what we call as transmission angle. This is active power P and this is reactive power. Okay. So maximum active power carried by the line is for delta equal to 90 degrees and that is V square by X which is called steady state limit. And maximum reactive power will be carried by the line at delta equal to 180 degrees which is 2V square by X double of this. Okay. Now, if this is sending n power, Vs, this is receiving n power, and if uh, delta is 180 degrees, this is delta 180 degrees, okay, then variation I will show like this, this can be Vs, this can be Vr, and this is it, delta. This is Vs, this may be Vr, and this is delta. Similarly, this is Vs, this is Vr, and this is delta. I'm, I'm trying to show, you know, different values of delta. Here, delta is less than as delta increases, this increases, as delta increases, and maximum value of delta is delta equal to 180 degrees. So, you can see as delta increases, as delta increases, the active power also increases up to delta equal to 90 degrees, current increases and Jix drop, this drop also increases. You can see this drop is maximum for delta equal to 180 degrees and then as delta decreases, this drop decreases. Or conversely, for less delta, drop is less, as delta increases, more drop, as delta increases, more and more drop. So as delta increases, current increases and Jix drop increases, but power flow also increases, both active power as well as reactive power. Right. <clears throat> so I will uh, stop my uh, today's lecture here. So in today's lecture, I have first of all uh, made a Tried, I have tried to make a comparison between HVDC technology and FACTS technology and we have seen uh, that from the point of view of economy, cost and uh, other aspects like technical issues, which technology uh, can be used. I told you that uh, in future, maybe five to after five to ten years, HVDC technology will become more popular. It's likely to become more popular than, sorry, uh, FACTS technology is likely to become more popular than HVDC technology. But the use of HVDC technology cannot be ruled out, okay? It has its own advantages. And then we try to model a long distributed parameter transmission line using a two machine model. And with the help of that, I tried to derive a mathematical ex expression for active power uh, uh, transferred over the transmission line, which was given by this equation P equal to V square by X sine delta and reactive power carried by the line which was given by this equation v, uh, Q equal to V square by X times 1 minus cos delta and we tried to plot P and Q as a function of delta. Okay, So with this I uh, will end my today's lecture. Inshallah in our next lecture we will have more discussions on active power flow and reactive power flow over long trans uncompensated transmission lines. And slowly we will uh, try to uh, see the need for compensation, various types of compensations and advantages of compensations like shunt compensation and series compensation. Uh, please go through this lecture. I wish all the best to all of you. Thank you.